Hi, my name is Brandon Beyer. I'm a Global Manager in Application Development with HIC and Univar Solutions. Today, we're going to take some time to talk about cleaning solutions around the world. We're going to visit our solution centers in Latin America, North America, and Europe. And we're going to take time to discuss important trends and innovations in cleaning. What's most important and innovative today? Now, let's hear from our technical team at the Essence Solutions Center. Hi, my name is Katarzyna romek shavirong and I'm application specialist dedicated to household and industrial cleaning. And this is our flagship Essence Solution Center based in Germany. Welcome. Today, I would like to discuss with you a dishwashing habits across different countries, nations, as well as times. Because when you think about the medieval age, what comes to your mind first? Well, possibly a pond, a river, maybe a bucket. And given the very poor hygiene, maybe just even scrubbing the plates dry. When you think about your household, what kind of different styles come to your mind? We can distinguish five of them. So some of the people are filling the sinks with the hot water and they're using different type of dish soap, wash their dishes, rinse them off with the running water and put them away. But this is not the only way of doing so. The other type is just washing using the running tap water. Another one is not rinsing it at all and it goes and goes. So once again, depending on the country, continent and the culture, your dishwashing style will differ. And this is not even the beginning. When we think about what kind of sponge or maybe even fancy scrubber you can use for your dishwashing, this also matters and change the way of using your dish soap. So, what is your preferred style? Welcome to our pilot plant area. This machine allows us to scale up all the formulations up to 10 liters. It can be used by all the industries such as HIC, BPC, Case, as well as Pharma. It consists of two vessels. One of them you can see with the anchors and the main emulsifier. And the second one, that is our melter that allows us to also introduce the solids, such as boxes used in beauty and personal care. Both of these vessels are connected within the pipe that allows us to simulate as close as possible our formulations to these from the bench. Let me show you how it works. Thanks to the vacuum pump, we can also create detergents because we are able to pressurize the chambers and allow our machine to decrease the foaming while producing a new one. Through this window, you are able to see how the inside of your formulation looks like and how does it spin. This is our washroom where all the testing on a full scale happens. We have in our disposition two washing machines as well as a dishwasher according to the industry standards. We are able to also use our dryers for the load that we're using for the testing. Here you can see the swatches of the different stains as well as our samples and, which is the most interesting part, a little bit of baby clothes that we are using for the cellulase testing. This is abrasion tester, also called a scrub test, that can be used not only for household and industrial cleaning, but also for our case unit. We are able to regulate the speed of uh, our testing as well as put some weight into the sponges. Since it's also used for case, we can do the abrasion within the brush 
but also we can change into something more rigid. And for our test with the hand dish soap, we are using sponge with the scrubbing side. This allows us to evaluate visually the efficiency of our hand soaps, but also multi-surface cleaners and any type of formulation that requires contact with the surface. So let's see how it goes. Here, what you can see, these are melamine plates covered with creme brulee stains baked according to the IKW protocol. And we are testing one of our homemade dish soaps that is included in the Sepapa kit. This is Tergotometer. It allows us to test eight formulations simultaneously, from the dishwashing to the laundry. We can also use it to test the protocol of dye transfer inhibition. We are able to control not only the speed of the turns, but also the water temperature and its hardness. Thanks, Kasha. Let me introduce Allison Hunter, Technical Services Manager, who will talk more about preservatives and a method for how to determine the right ingredients for your cleaning formulation. One of the trends we're seeing in the North American market is that home care products are following some of the trends from the personal care market. For preservatives in particular, the personal care market and now many home care brands have rejected the use of formaldehyde donors and parabens. These are effective preservatives that were widely used in the past. Although only a very small amount is typically needed in a formulation, Preservatives provide a valuable function to protect the packaged product from microorganisms, such as bacteria, yeast, and mold. In the news recently, there have been some recalls of well-known home care products due to microbial contamination. Choosing the wrong type of preservative or not including enough preservative can be a very costly mistake. Adding to the challenge, home care products run the gamut of pH ranges compared to a narrower pH window for personal care products which need to be non-irritating to skin. It is possible to formulate a home care product that doesn't need a preservative for in-package protection. The formula may be self-preserving if it meets any of these criteria. If it's anhydrous or low water, less than 5%. If the pH is less than three or greater than 10. If it contains greater than 20% alcohol, or if it contains an EPA registered disinfectant. However, even when these criteria are met, a Preservative Efficacy Challenge Test, or PET test, is recommended if the formula doesn't contain a registered disinfecting active. A disinfectant efficacy test is required by the EPA for sanitizing products. After determining that your product will require a preservative, the next step is to select the best type to provide adequate protection while allowing the desired claims or certifications for the product. I'm going to review a few common preservatives that are effective at different pH ranges, as well as some of the different benefits to consider. Sodium benzoate is a preservative that is already well known and trusted in food, personal care, and pharmaceuticals that home care formulators are starting to utilize. For lower pH formulas, and that's around less than seven, and formulations that are going to be EPA Safer Choice registered, sodium benzoate may be a good fit. Sodium benzoate is a broad spectrum preservative, which means it's effective for controlling bacteria, yeast, and mold. Some notable green benefits include nature identical, biodegradable, and EPA Safer Choice ingredient listed. The use level is dependent on the pH, with lower pH requiring lower sodium benzoate levels, near the 0.1% level, and higher pH formulas requiring a higher use level, up to 1.25%. However, since the level of preservative required is very formula dependent, a PET challenge test should always be performed. A newer preservative technology, developed for personal care products, but available for use in home care, contains capril hydroxamic acid, or CHA, 
blended with different polyols and or medium chain terminal diols. These can be a good fit when formulations need to contain all bio-based materials and the pH is between four and eight. Formulations containing organic acids are effective when in the undissociated acid form. CHA has a high pKa of around 9.4, which is the reason it provides efficacy above neutral pH. Spectrostat PHL is an example of one of the Spectrostat grades available based on CHA chemistry. I chose this one to review today because the components in the blend are all listed on Tosca, which means it can be used outside of personal care. In addition, it is appropriate for clear formulas, which is not the case for some of the other grades. All of the Spectrostat preservatives are broad spectrum and biodegradable, and this particular grade is 66% bio-based. Use level is dependent on the pH, with lower pH formulas require inspector set PHL near the lower end of the range at about 1.5%. Formulas with a pH near the upper end of the effective range require a loading at the higher end, around 3%. Again, PET challenge testing is always recommended to dial in the correct level. Phenoxyethanol meets the criteria for home care formulations with pH below 8 that need to be EPA safer choice registered. Although phenoxyethanol is not naturally derived, it is a broad spectrum, biodegradable preservative with recommended use level less than 1%. For microbial cleaning products, Novozymes recommends phenoxyethanol as being compatible with their bacillus microbes. Methyl isothiazolinone, or MIT for short, and blends of MIT with methyl chloral isothiazolinone, CMIT, represent another option for preservative selection when effectiveness is needed for a broad or higher pH. Although CMIT, MIT blends are effective up to pH of eight, MIT is effective over a large pH range from two to 12. MIT and CMIT blends provide broad spectrum preservative efficacy. They're biodegradable and EPA safer choice listed. Since their use level is extremely low, we have seen them in home care products claiming to be greater than 99% bio-based. Olá, sejam bem-vindos ao Centro de Soluções de Home Care Industrial Cleaning da Universe Solutions Brasil. Eu sou a Jennifer Assis, analista do laboratório de HIC. Eu sou Maria Clara Saldanha, analista do laboratório de HIC. Estamos as responsáveis por realizar testes e estudos de produtos de limpeza. Aqui fazemos sugestões de fórmulas, color match e estudos de estabilidade térmica e sun test, que é um equipamento que submete a amostra à luz de maneira constante e confiável. Aqui são sugestões de fórmulas que fazemos aqui no laboratório. Aqui são os nossos liquid tints, que são utilizados para dar cor a produtos líquidos. E aqui são os CAT, que são os corantes para é, produtos em pó. Aqui é o Santesh, nosso equipamento. Colocamos aqui dentro as amostras. Nesse equipamento, a gente avalia ele com a solidez à luz. Então, ele fica de maneira constante exposto à luz. E a cada seis horas no equipamento, ele dura seis meses o produto. Além disso, também realizamos alguns testes de performance, dentre eles, o de lavagem de roupas. Esses testes são conduzidos para gerar inovação, sustentabilidade e performance, a fim de substituir matérias-primas agressivas ou em escassez por matérias-primas mais sustentáveis. Agora, iremos falar um pouco sobre os processos de lavagem que nós utilizamos a fim de verificar o cuidado com a roupa, a maciez e a remoção de manchas. Atualmente no Brasil, há tendência no crescimento da fabricação do detergente lavar roupas líquido, devido à facilidade de produção por exigir um maquinário mais simples. Porém, o detergente lavar roupas em pó ele é um produto mais popular na região. Embora seja bem específico e demande bastante energia, algumas empresas já estão utilizando energia verde nesse processo. Sabemos que nos últimos anos o mercado tem sofrido com as altas do preço e a falta de matérias-primas bases para a produção de detergente em pó, como por exemplo a barrilha, 
Por isso, trazemos propostas com ótimo custo em uso, maior performance e disponibilidade para ser aplicado no detergente em pó. Esses testes são bem detalhados e específicos. Nós controlamos a dureza da água, temperatura, agitação, dosagem de produto por litro de água utilizado. Tudo para reproduzir ao máximo o que o consumidor vai encontrar em seu lar. Nesses testes, podemos utilizar máquinas de lavar ou um tergotômetro, que simula em pequena escala uma lavadora de roupas. Com ele, podemos reproduzir até seis lavagens de uma vez, com pouquíssimo gasto de água e mantendo a proporção de produto e tecido que seria encontrado numa lavagem convencional. É uma alternativa mais rápida e sustentável para realizarmos os testes de performance. As sujidades também são padronizadas nesse processo. Para isso, nós utilizamos manchas técnicas, como as empas, e utilizamos manchas naturais também, que são feitas com elementos característicos da região. Por exemplo, fazemos uma mancha de sorvete com a marca popular do país. Sempre seguimos o procedimento de dosagem, forma de espalhar e tempo que essa mancha ficará impregnada no tecido antes da lavagem. Assim, conseguimos reprodutibilidade e confiabilidade nos nossos testes comparativos. Com tudo pronto e alinhado, adicionamos as manchas na terra. Em seguida, adicionamos alguns tecidos em quantidade padronizada para servirem de carga e simularem a lavagem em domicílio. Aqui temos dois resultados de testes de performance de lavagem comparando um detergente lava-roupas com enzima e outro sem enzima. Aqui podemos ver a mancha não lavada comparada com a mancha sem enzima e aqui com enzima. Aqui se repete da mesma maneira, não lavada, sem enzima e com enzima. Para definir numericamente a limpeza e a eficácia dos testes, nós utilizamos o espectro fotômetro nas manchas, tanto antes quanto após a lavagem. Ele vai medir se houve uma mudança de cor e se a mancha ficou mais clara, obtendo assim dados comparativos confiáveis. Além da performance de limpeza, também podemos fazer testes de manchamento, de espuma, como podemos ver aqui na proveta, a formação da espuma no produto, entre outros testes para dar todo o suporte para o mercado de lavanderia. É importante destacar que em nosso centro de soluções, nós conseguimos realizar testes específicos para outros mercados, como louça, automotivo e superfícies. Essas são algumas das capacidades do nosso Centro de Soluções de Home Care Industrial Cleaning para trazer inovação, sustentabilidade e performance para o seu produto de limpeza. Please reach out to us to learn more about global cleaning trends driving the future of clean. And remember, your next clean innovation starts here at Univar Solutions. Well, thanks everyone for joining the uh, cleaning solutions around the world. Again, Brandon Byer is the moderator here, but I'm going to step back and ask some questions from our experts, uh, Allison Hunter, Kasha Romick Chevron, and Jennifer Assis. And I'd like to start with Allison with a few of our frequently asked questions. So, Allison, uh, what's the difference between a preservative and a disinfectant? Yes, so um, a preservative inhibits microbial growth. So that's for in package protection um, to ensure consumer safety, and it can also extend the product shelf life. Um, whereas a disinfectant is actually in the US regulated by the EPA and needs to be registered with the EPA. So there are some um, EPA actives. Uh, so common things that you're probably familiar with, like bleach, hydrogen peroxide, ethanol, certain quads, and certain types of acids like lactic, hydrochloride, citric, um, and others. Thanks, Allison. So Jennifer, a uh, question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Are dye tests always submitted to SunTest? Yes. In Universe Solutions Brazil, 
And we always conduce this test. It is important to know that we submit the color product and the base without the color too. Because sometimes some colors changes are from the product and not necessarily a, a stability issue with the colorant. In this case, we can provide all the technical support to solve it too. Thanks, Jennifer. So Kasha, or Dr. Kasha, um, is there some kind of hand dishwashing protocol? Well, actually there is. And uh, the American Cleaning Institute came up with a set of simple guidelines in this matter. There are five. The first one is a prep. So you scrape off your food. Then you fill, get some clean water, very hot, uh, not too hot to prevent uh, burn on your hands, and add some soap. Then you wash, you scrub away uh, under the water, then you have rinse, so you remove all the suds and residue and dry with air dry or towel dry method. And of course, this varies from one household to another, but these are the official guidelines. Thanks, Kasha. So kind of going back around the horn, back to you, Allison. Um, enzymes are really popular now, especially in, in all regions, reducing water temperatures. Are there any types of um, preservative issues or compatibility challenges when formulating with enzymes and preservatives? Yeah, so the main issue is that enzymes are not compatible with formaldehyde or formaldehyde donors, but we're seeing less of those types of preservatives being used in home care anyway. Um, but, and then the other issue to be aware is that for stability, formulation should be between pH seven to nine. Um, so any of the preservatives um, I talked about that are effective in that range can be used. Thank you. Jennifer, so what are the advantage of reducing soda ash and replacing it with enzymes and a powder detergent to continue the dialogue around some enzyme applications? Mm -hmm. When we do this replacement, normally we can reduce a large percentage of soda ash and use less enzymes. Of course, the value will depend on the percentage that you will put on your formulation. But we talk about something around replace 10% for 0.2% as a general example. The soda ash cost is low, but it varies a lot. So in many moments, these exchanges become uh, a cost again. And enzymes deliveries a better performance, more sustainable, and gentler on hands and fabric. Thank you. So, Kasha, I'm going to continue the, the dialogue kind of around some of these environmental impact. And one was, how can we assure that the products we're using today have a minimal impact on the environment? That seems to be a, a trend when it comes to um, the, you know, the, the addition of enzymes. So what could you say around that, please? Well, we are striving for most concentrated formulations. And that will limit the usage of water as well as we're trying to implement green biodegradable plant originated surfactant systems uh, that are boosted with enzymes. So we're going back to enzymes again. And uh, the biggest advantage is that they are efficient even in the cold water to limit the energy consumption and it allows us to enable the lowest interference with our surroundings. Thank you. You know, um, nothing says waste like throwing away an entire bottle of a product because it's gone bad without preservative. Um, and Allison, you had mentioned the importance of completing preservative efficacy uh, challenge tests, so PET. Is that a service that Univar Solutions provides? So currently we don't provide that service at any of our solution centers, um, but however, we do have some outside labs that we partner with. So if this is something that is needed for a project, we can certainly scope it into a lab service project. So, and just kind of adding to that, Allison, uh, where do you see preservatives going in the next few years? Yeah, so I think we'll continue to see uh, more green preservatives with higher bio-based content coming from beauty and personal care. 
So a, a good recent example, Intellex launched SpectraSat GHL, which is a 100% bio-derived preservative. Um, it's not listed on Tosca yet, which means it can't be used outside of beauty and personal care. Um, and then the other trend, I think we'll continue to see um, more systems used, more boosters and keylants used in combination with a primary preservative. Um, so another example of this, Lanxess has recently introduced Emerald X7, which is a booster technology that you can use with sodium benzoate. Thanks, Allison. You know, um, pr preservation is about keeping a product together and not growing microbes, bacteria, whatnot. But one of the other big challenges with formulation is stability. And I know we have two people here and, you know, in particular that are in the lab. And a lot of times stability testing with light is people making a sample and sticking a bottle in a window. So, Jennifer, could you tell me, is the sun test more reliable than the window stability testing? Yes. When we submitted a sample to light test using a window, we depend to sun incidence, and this varies according to the time of year, uh, season, and even weather conditions. So when we use an equipment, we are standardizing the same incidence and equally between the samples, making the test much more reliable. Thank you. I think we may have lost a little connection with Kasha, but that's okay. We'll wait till she pops back on. Um, so as a question for you, Allison, what challenges do you foresee as formulators replace older preservative technologies with new green bio-based versions? Yes, um, as you just alluded to, sometimes there can be compatibility issues when you just swap out one preservative for another. Um, you know, things like viscosity shifts or phase separation in your formula. But at Univar Solutions, we're here to help you optimize formulas and use some of the new greener preservative technologies. Thank you. So, Kasha, it looks like we've got you back. Um, so, quick question for you. Kind of one is is it's a twofold question. One, historically, how did people wash their dishes before dishwashing products were invented? And then, coupling on to that, um, why would you even use a hand dishwash product versus say automatic dishwash? Can you, why not just so first thing, how were the how's this always been done historically? And then second, why would you ever wash things by hand where you can just stick it in a dishwasher and hit go? Oh, well, that's a really good question. I like this part uh, a lot. The, the whole job of uh, dishwashing began in prehistory with some sparring of pottery and utensils at the nearest water source, so it could be a river, a lake. But when we go further with the time, the Babylonian and the Egyptians, they already had soaps. Uh, there were mixtures uh, to suit different purposes, apparently, and they were including two or more of animal and vegetable fats, ash, and some alkaline salts, as well as oils. When we move even more, and uh, taken as example, uh, Chinese Su dynasty that discovered that certain plants could, could even be used to remove the grease. It's really impressive. A uh, more modern example would be here that uh, from kind of the book from 1869, The American Woman, and it advised against use of soaps, as while it is very good for your hands and clothes, obviously, it's a really nasty thing to eat. Right, and they recommended to use a baking soda instead and sugar sand for scrubbing. From prehistory to the modern times, uh, the approach changed a lot uh, and not so much at the same time, like I mentioned in previous household. But the products that we are using, this is a completely different standard. And yes, it's sometimes tedious to do the hand dishwashing instead of just putting everything conveniently into the uh, automatic dishwasher. But we need to into consideration that in different parts of the world, the dishwasher availability is either scarce or simply a potential user is not able to afford one. And the good part is that with help and growing of growing efficiency, uh, we have hand dish soaps uh, in different forms, which are suited to different needs and they can provide the best cleanliness of our daily utensils. That's it's highly important as we consume food and beverages from it. 
Thanks, Kasha. So Jennifer, I have a question to kind of jump off of what Kasha had said. So when we talk hand dish and we talk automatic dish, there's a different forms of products. Some are liquid, some are gel, some are powders. Um, and we talked a bit about enzymes. So could you, could you speak, are the enzymes used in powder products the same as those used in liquid? It's a really good question. We have liquid enzymes and we have powder enzymes for both of uh, or more applications in products. So for powder products, for liquid products, they will have the same types of enzymes, but one in liquid and one in powder. Thank you. You know, I, I don't want to, I want to respect everyone's time. Uh, so one last question, this one's going to you, Kasha. Uh, what can the solution centers offer to our customers in light of the increasing demands for sustainable products? Across the entire globe, in each and every solution center, we have a team of application specialists uh, who are working tightly together with our technical account managers, as well as sales departments and product marketing managers to bring the most suitable solutions uh, that are tailored uh, for not only every need, every focus, but also to each and every customer. And thanks to our suppliers, we have an access to a vast variety of raw materials. And with our knowledge and, of course, passion for novelty, we can use that for prototyping and making things as snug as a glove uh, for every demand uh, of our customers. Thanks, Kasha. And thanks, Allison. Thanks, Jennifer. And thanks for everyone today for joining us for the Cleaning Solutions on the World, as well as this Q&A for some frequently asked questions. Uh, if you have any follow-up um, comments, questions, discussions, please reach out to us through universalsolutions.com and we are always happy to help. Thank you much.